going over these graphs for our absent colleagues. Okay, so the first problem. Okay, was number it was number eleven, correct? Yeah. And it was on page five sixty-five, and it was r equals negative three sine theta. Now there's two general things you need to keep track of on these. One, you have to have memorized the patterns. We'll talk a little later on where the patterns come from that might help you. And the other is you have to make the table. Okay? Robbie, you have a question? Yeah, can I get it to you later? If I don't yes. copy it yes. now. You can uh, copy it now and show it to me later. Do both. Okay. okay, so r equals sine negative three sine theta. You have to remember that this is the pattern r equals a sine or cosine theta, and this always produces a circle tangent to origin. If you remember that, and you remember that the sine always tells you up or down, and the cosine tells you left or right, and then whether A is positive, negative tells you whether it's up or down if it's sine, left or right if it's cosine, you can graph it right from here. In fact, if you're 100% certain about the pattern for this one, you can go straight to this step. It's a circle. It's tangent to the origin. The diameter is 3. Because it's sine, it's on the y-axis. And because it's uh, negative, it's going down. And you can go straight down to 3 units. And you can draw that circle. And this is the point 3. 3 pi over 2 in polar coordinates. Wouldn't it be negative 3? Nope. Because you've gone, it's the point, if it's the point negative 3, what angle is it? 270. Nope. If I want to go up to, this is the point where I go around 270 degrees yeah, and then so walk 3 paces, get positive 3 paces away. So if I want to make that negative, I could go up oh, to 90 right. degrees, uh, and then I could go backwards, and that would be negative 3 pi over 2. So those are the two possibilities for labeling that point. There's nothing wrong with what I just did. I don't recommend relying on it, especially when you're on a test and you've got six of these to graph, and you're staring at it. So I always recommend making the table with the theta and the radius, and putting in some version of these points. 0, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I say some version because of what's going to happen on the rows and the, uh, well, mostly the rows. Here's where you have to know your unit circle. Theta is 0. The sine of 0 is 0. 0 times negative 3 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. The sine of pi is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. The sine of 2 pi is 0. 0 times negative 3 is 0. But all this tells me is when I'm facing 0 degrees, or 0 radians, I don't go anywhere. When I'm facing pi over 2 or 90 degrees, I go 3 in the other direction. That's this point down here, negative 3 comma pi over 2. When I'm facing 180 degrees or pi radians, I don't go anywhere. When I'm facing 3 pi over 2 or straight down, I go positive 3 units from the origin. And when I'm facing 2 pi, I don't go anywhere. So it's telling you that the graph is correct. Yes, but the table, if you do the table first, you'll only get these two points. So I would say there's some combination of doing the table every time and remembering that A sine or cosine theta always gets you a circle tangent to the origin. If you combine those two tricks, you should always get the right graph. But I don't think the table rarely gives you enough information. Remember we did this as one of the first examples, and I started filling in pi over 4, other things, and I got really hard to graph points that weren't very, and no clear circle shape came out. So you can't get away without memorizing these. 
Um, but unless you're a fantastic memorizer of at least uh, 16 different patterns, um, I would suggest you also do the table every time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's your strategy for these. Any questions on this graph? I didn't know from the table this would be a circle. I did know everything I needed to from this original equation, but the table is still a great idea to find out if you've made a mistake or not. But you need both. Um, okay, may I erase this? Yeah. Okay. What was the next one? Oh, well, let's take a quick look at it. They're not super hard. What was the actual equation? R equals what? Three R, three equals three. R equals 3 theta. There's no trig to this one. Um, but I didn't go over this one. I apologize for assigning it. But let's make the table real quick and see what happens. They're kind of fun. When theta is 0, R equals 0. R equals zero. Now, this is another one of those cases where we really want to stay in radians. Radians are a genuine measure of what's happening. They're an actual proportion of how far you are around any circle. They are real. Everything else is just something made up by the ancient Sumerians. Damn them. 0 to 360. Makes no sense. Totally arbitrary. So when theta is pi over 2, what's 3 times pi over 2? Pi over 2. That's pi over 2 divided by 3. 3, pi over two. Pi. three times pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Now, with this relationship in radians, this is an actual distance. Pi over 2 is about 1.57. That's half of 3.14. So 3 pi over 2 is 3 times about 1.57. 3 times 1.5 is 4.5. 3 times uh, 7 would be 21. Think of it as like 3 times 157. And that's going to be about 4.71. Theta is pi. If r equals 3 theta and theta is pi, what's r? 3 pi. 3 pi. Pi is about 3.14. Triple that, you get about 9.42. This is why I don't like the spirals very much. What happens when you triple 3 pi over 2? 6 pi over 2. Well, triple it, you get 9 pi over 2. Yeah. And that's going to be about 3 times bigger than pi over 2 was. So as an actual length, it's going to be about 3 times that. 3 times 4 would be 12. 3 times the 0.7. We're getting to about 14.23. Is that right? Tripling 4.71? Someone double check me on that. 14.13. 1, 3. Something I knew didn't feel right in my head about that. Okay? And then if we go to 2 pi and we triple that, um, we 6 pi, which is double 9.42. Let's see if I can redeem myself. That's going to be 18.84. Okay, now, I don't really care that you know exactly where these are on a graph. Let's see if we can get close. At zero degrees, zero radians, we've gone zero units. At pi over two, we've gone to about 4.71. Actually, I'll do this in units of pi. If that's pi, and that's two pi, three pi over two would be right in between them, right? At pi, we've gone 3 pi, so keeping my units somewhat consistent, I would put 3 pi about right there. 3 pi over 2. Whoops, I've only gone pi over 2, so that should be, no, 3 pi, 9 pi over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 4 and a half pi, right? And these are still positive distances from the origin, so I'm not going to mark them as... It's good to know the decimal conversions, but if I keep everything in terms of pi, I don't really need them. 
and then 6 pi, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is right there. And the end result is an ever-increasing spiral. What's going to keep happening if we keep going with this? What's it going to get bigger every time? It's going to get a lot bigger every time. So that's your spiral of Archimedes. What do this, you, what do you use this for? You ever seen a Nautilus shell? Yeah, there was a picture of that on the test one. Follows that shape. I mean, does that, can, you, can you tell any like, data with that or anything? Um, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is um, I don't have the time or enough specifics to tell you exactly what we'd use it for. Um, if you ever had to duplicate a Nautilus shell design for some reason, <laughs> um, seems kind of silly. Nature's already done it. Um, biologists can use this sort of thing to predict. And again, there is a way to turn this into, we'll talk about that tomorrow, there's a way to turn this back into rectangular coordinates, into x's and y's, but I guarantee you that equation is nowhere near as simple as r equals 3 theta. So if for some reason you have to do the math on a nautilus shell, you really want it in this form, not in um, rectangular form. Well, the quick way to do it would be, this is x squared plus y squared equals 3 times the inverse tangent of y over x. Yeah, I mean, Does that look like a fun equation to manipulate, no. to find the next point in? <laughs> no. This one looks a lot easier. That's a super quick based on the conversions I gave you guys last week. Um, any questions on the spiral of Archimedes? That would have been a fair one for you guys to come in and say, I left this blank. Can you not erase it? No. May I erase the table? Yeah, you can erase it. Okay. And I'll start doing the table for the next one. Um, next one will be 15. Yeah. And what was that? 3, uh, three equals 2 sine 3 theta. R equals 3 plus? No, R equals 2 sine. 2 sine 3 theta. Yeah. What kind of thing is this? Uh, rose. Rose. So you've got to know that. You've got to know it's a rose. It's not a cosine, so it won't be right along the x-axis. But let's do the table and see if that tells us more about the rose. Um, theta r. Now normally, and I'll write this off to the side, on the first few, I said to do 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi for your table. 0 won't change. Because of this 3, because of that 3, what will I change pi over 2? What angle will I use instead of pi over 2? Exactly wrong. Nope, we're going to divide by 3 and use pi over 6. See, the goal is when I put pi over 6 into my polar equation, after I multiply it by 3, then I get pi over 2. See, I want to put 30 degrees in because 3 times 30 will be 90. I only want to deal with the sign of 90, 180, 270, and 0. So you always divide by the number of Yep, divide it by the coefficient in front of theta, and you'll get a very nice table here. Very useful table, I think. So instead of pi, I'm going to use pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. Uh, instead of, hold on, that down here, this will be 2 pi over 3. That's right. 3 pi over 2 divided by 3 will just be pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to erase this so it's not confusing. And... First one's easy, I hope. Sine of 0, 3 times 0 is 0. For pi over 6, I'll show that on this one. If we put pi over 6 in for theta, what's 3 times pi over 6? Uh, pi over 2. Okay, Diego knows this. I need to hear some voices other than his, though. So this is 2 sine pi over 2. Someone other than Diego, what's the sine of pi over 2? Um, sine of pi over 2 is 1, one. times 2, 2 gets me 2. OK, so similarly, when I put pi over 3 in, multiply 3 times that, I'm only going to be dealing with the sine of pi. What's the sine of pi? 180 degrees, how up and down are you? You're 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Very good. Similarly, when I take pi over 2 and place it in, 
I multiply pi over 2 by 3, and suddenly I'm talking about 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees. Sine of 270s is negative 1. 270 degrees is negative 1, so that's negative 2. And at 2 pi over 3, if I put that in and triple it, I get 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0, 2 times 0 is 0. So my points are 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 0. So I wound up taking the sine of pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. Here's the confusing part. You can't forget that the original angles were pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 2, and 2 pi over 3, because that's where the points are actually going to go. So we start. So, so Mr. Lobo, yes. Even if you plug in, I mean, even if you divide uh, all those by three, at the end you're still going to have the sign of the original. No, uh, maybe. The pi over two and the pi. Yeah. When you plug them back in, you got to keep. You got to have sort of two things going on in your head. When you're getting your values, you're going to wind up dealing with pi over two, mm -hmm. because that's what three times pi over six is. So that's nice. But when you graph it, I actually graph. Pi over two, I actually graph two comma pi over six. I have to use these angles on my graph, the ones I got by dividing. Because that is where we're actually facing. When I put pi over six in for theta, that means I am facing up at a 30 degree angle. And then I've gone out two units. So that's two comma pi over six. Again, when I put the pi over six into that, I got 90 degrees, which made life a little easier in my calculations. Um, when I get to pi over 3, which would be 60 degrees, I'm still at 0. When I get to pi over 2, when I get to pi over 2, 90 degrees, I got a negative 2. So if you have pi over 2, you're facing 90 degrees, you're facing straight up, but the radius is negative, you go that distance down. Excellent. So this is the point negative 2 comma pi over 2. And now, at 2 pi over 3, how many degrees is 2 pi over 3? How many degrees is 2 pi over 3? Yeah. Um, 120. 120. So that's... that's something, something's not looking right for me there. That's 30, that's 60. Pi over 6, pi, pi over 3, you're at 0, 3 pi over 2, you got pi over 2. Not quite liking this. Oh, because 2 pi over 3 is 0, that's why, that's fine, I didn't have to do anything there. That's where we'd be facing. Okay, good. So. What I've done is I've gone, as I start at zero degrees, I gradually get some radius, then I lose that radius, pick up some more. Actually, this is as far as our table tells us. That's as far as our table tells us to go. We have no idea what to do from there. Any idea what you think this thing does from there based on what we did last time? Well, how many pedals should we have? We should have three pedals. Remember, if there's an odd coefficient here, you have the same number of pedals. If there's an even combination, you get twice as many. So we should have three pedals. We have one and a half. I'll go ahead and make a wild guess. Those do not look the same length, but please pretend with me that they are. Um, they are supposed to be the same length. Where do you think the third pedal is? How come? Because it's the same thing. Yeah. Symmetrical. Tim had the idea, Danny had the word. Are they always... This really is supposed to be two units away. Um, so at 150 degrees, do we get positive 2? No, we have to plug in 350. We will get this point. We will get this point there. Um, sine of 450, 90, positive 1. Yes, this is... It's positive 2, comma. Uh, in radians, 5 pi over 6. 
that will be a positive. For a second, I'm just making sure it wasn't down here at 330 degrees with a negative. Um, are all of them symmetrical about what we used to call the y-axis? There's a sine in there, but not if there's a cosine. The cosine ones will be different. The easier thing to remember is just that if there's three pedals, they're evenly spaced. If there's however many pedals you have, the pedals are evenly spaced on a rose. Does that make sense? Okay. They'll be evenly spaced as well, so they'll be 90 degrees apart. Would there really be eight Oh, if you had a coefficient of four. Yeah. If this was four, you'd have eight pedals that would be 45 degrees apart. If this was two, you'd get four pedals 90 degrees apart. Yes? Yeah. Sneak behind. Um, any questions on this one? All right. May I erase it? Okay. And what is number 17? Uh, it's uh, another spiral of me. It's uh, r equals 5 halves i. 5 which? Five halves theta? Okay, I'm not going to know the spiral of Archimedes, they're boring. You multiply all of them by five halves and you do it by multiples. So what's number uh, 21? 19. Or 19? Yeah, it's r equals negative 2 minus 2 sine theta. This one interests me. Minus 2 sine theta? Yeah. Okay. If I'm really good, I can use the fact that this is sine and the fact that it's a number plus or minus a sine and there's no n in front of the theta. Remember, this is some sort of limacon or limason, depending on how you're pronouncing it. If I'm really good, I'll even remember the rule that because these are the same value, it's a cardioid. And that means the little nub, it doesn't have a hole, and the little nub is at the origin. How, how did you tell if you had a hole? Um, with the hole, yes, yes. God, I'm blanking. Um, if, if these are different values, then one of them has the hole, and the other one has the um, doesn't. And I think it's if this one's bigger, but off the top of my head, I, I always make the tables so that I don't have to remember that, that, Diego. Well, this one just says if that one's R equals A plus B. Pardon? For the thing here, it says R equals A plus B. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't specify which one gets you the hole and which one doesn't on there. But I did on Friday in your notes, darn it. Now yeah. I'm forgetting. Yeah, if it's greater than... It should be in your notes. Or equal to, right. It's... No. Oh, if, if a, a is, is uh, if a is uh, smaller than b, then you have a hole. If a is bigger than b, they have no hole. Excellent. And it's only if a is equal to b that you get right on the origin that you get the cardioid. You get that little cusp on the origin. Okay. Sure. I was totally blanking on that. I was trying to do it in my head as you asked me. <laughs> um, all right. So let's do our table just so we don't have to memorize every single thing. If you just remember this is some sort of limicon, then whether it's a cardioid or not will take care of itself as you do the table. Um, now there's no coefficient in front of the theta, so I'm going to go ahead and use 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Um, sine of 0 is 0, negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Pi over 2 we get positive 1, negative 2 minus 2 is minus 4. Pi is 0, negative 2. 3 pi over 2. Here's where that cusp coming on the origin comes in. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 becomes plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 becomes 0. 2 pi, you're back at 0. And negative 2 plus 0 gets you negative 2. How'd I do on the table, do you think? Thank you. I need that validation every once in a while. Darn you, Diego, for asking a question I did not know about. <laughs> All right. Zero, negative two. Um, zero means I'm facing the zero radians axis. Negative two means I go this way, two units. Pi over two means I'm facing 90 degree axis. Minus four means... I go this way, four units. 180 pi radians, 180 degrees, means I'm facing west, but the negative sign means I go east, two units. This is a fun one. I'm facing south, 3 pi over 2, the 270 degree axis, but I don't go anywhere. 
So I'm at the origin. And again, I'm facing, back to facing, 360 degrees. Go negative 2, which puts me two units there. So this is your right side up lima bean, called a cardioid, very heart shaped. It should be more symmetrical than my drawing, I apologize. Do you have to make it like curvy or can you make it like, can go like in this and then to a point? Um, you have to make it curvy. It does not have a, it doesn't have a Valentine's. Yeah, so it I doesn't look like a Valentine's Day heart. But then again, neither does a human heart. So <laughs> human heart looks probably a little more like this than this. But um, human heart looks a bit more like the lima bean. A little bit, yeah. Um, but again, it really helped knowing you were looking at a lima song, and it helped me to know that it was a cardioid starting out. So I was on the lookout for that point at the origin. If I didn't get that, then I would know that I made some mistake. But for every one of these, I would say. Memorize the patterns and do the table. Okay? Memorize the patterns and do the table for every single one. If you don't remember the pattern, do the table and see if that sparks your memory. That's my strong, strong, strong advice. Um, I think these were all the graphs. Was 21 a question about a spiral? And did I assign 21? Yeah, 21. No, 21 was. It was they gave you the graph and you had to figure out. No, no, no. It was all equal. All equal Oh, let's do that. That's a rose. I like this. May I erase this one? Yes. Okay. If we're going too fast for someone at home, they can... Yes. <laughs> they can, they can pause it. It's in high def. It takes so long to upload. So 21 was R equals... Yeah. Correct to understand what we're saying. Sign four theta, you said? No coefficient? Yeah. No. Okay. All right, so now for the table, for your theta and then your r, instead of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, I'm going to divide everything by 4. 0 divided by 4. Pi over 8, pi over 4, 3 pi over 8. 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, correct? Yeah. Did I divide each of those by 4 correctly? Yeah. Okay. So now we plug these in. Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi over 8 times 4 means we're figuring the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. one. That's our 4. I'm sorry, that's just 1. Yep, put in pi, we get 0. Put in 3 pi over 8, the 4 changes it to 3 pi over 2, which is our negative 1. And put in 2 pi, zero. put in pi over 2, the 4 changes it to 2 pi, and it's 0. Now the thing to remember is, we used pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi to find the values, but these angles are still pi over 8, which is 22.5 degrees. It's half of 45 degrees. We've only looked at quadrant one. So we're going to be assuming a lot of symmetry here. There's going to be eight petals, right? Yeah, it's going to be eight petals evenly spaced. Um, again, if you're really good with the pattern, I'm not going to tell you you can't do this. I'm going to tell you you want to make the table. What I am going to tell you is if you do it the way I'm about to describe and get it wrong and don't make a table, I'm going to laugh at you and give you very little partial credit on the test. <laughs> but you could conceivably get to here and say, all right, I know this pattern. I know it's a rose. I know there's eight petals. I see there's not one at zero, and I see the first one is at 22.5 degrees, and you could just evenly space them from there after stopping here. And if you get it right that way, more power to you. I suggest you keep going through the table a little further, just to be sure, but... Well, when you know someone's not going to try that. I know. That's not Okay, so here's my pi over four. I'm doing that first because it's easiest to draw. Now, you will have polar graph paper for the test, and I hope you guys are printing it at home. But if I cut that in half, I know that's 22.5, but I'm just going to label it as pi over 8. And if I go halfway between 45 and 90, I know that is my 67.5 or so, so I'm, gonna, but I'm just going to label it 3 pi over 8. I'm going to go ahead and make one fairly big. And... 
many petals am I going to wind up with here? Eight. Okay, oh, but I only graph, I don't do one at pi over four. I only did that to help me graph these. So I've got a petal here at pi over eight. Which on the, on if, would be equal to what on the graph? Yeah, it does have a length of one. So this is the point um, one comma pi over eight. And this is the point one comma three pi over eight. And there's no petal out of pi over four. I just did that to help my drawing. Now, this is all that the graph has told me. I mean, sorry, this is all that the table has told me. But I know there's eight petals evenly spaced, so I can go ahead and do... It's a peacock. Um, how picky am I going to be with this? Depends. On the test, I'm going to give you polar graph paper and a ruler. On your homework, I'm not going to be that picky. And if I'm doing it on the board, I'm not being very picky at myself. There's no, oh my gosh, that's too bad for me to live with. So um, as long as we get the basic idea on the homework? Yeah, well, let me tell you. I'm going to go ahead and say get some polar graph paper for your homework. Okay. And if you've got polar graph paper, this is a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Are we going to use that board? Pardon? Are we going to use that board sometime? Uh, yeah, yes we will. Especially for... Um, when we add mix in polar. I should have used that board for this one, obviously, because this is a horrible rose. Yeah. And I apologize for that. Um, but yes, my uh, polar graph paper will be better. Any questions? Okay, so part of your homework for tonight is to get yourself some polar graph paper. The rest of the homework, this is page, what page is this? Uh, uh, 565. Okay. 12 through 22 even is your homework for tonight. Same types of problems. There was another problem. Pardon? There was another problem. Uh, I did, but I'm good. I'm good stopping here. So that's your homework, and um, you can start it as soon right now if you want.